The seven last words of Jesus on the cross. In the solemn observance of Good Friday, Christians around the world reflect on the passion and sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. The tradition of meditating on the seven last words of Jesus offers a profound insight into his final moments and his universal messages of forgiveness, salvation, relationship, abandonment, distress, triumph, and reunion. He was crucified because of his love for us. At Calvary, also known as Golgotha, where three crosses stand against a darkening sky, Jesus is crucified in the center with two thieves on either side. A small crowd gathers, Roman soldiers, Mary, Jesus' mother, Mary Magdalene, John the beloved disciple, and various onlookers. The first word, Jesus speaks to the Father, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Luke 23, 34 As soldiers cast lots for his clothing, Jesus' voice breaks the silence, offering forgiveness to those who have condemned him, betrayed him, and nailed him to the cross. In the midst of unimaginable pain, Jesus teaches the power of forgiveness, asking his Father to forgive us, setting the ultimate example of love and grace. As stones of judgment and misunderstanding are cast, let us remember Jesus' first response to his persecutors, forgiveness. In our own trials, may we find the strength to forgive those who stand against us, reflecting Jesus' love and mercy, even in the face of hostility. Let us mirror boundless mercy of Christ. The second word, criminal said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Luke 23.42 One of the criminals crucified beside Jesus taunts him, while the other seeks mercy. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Luke 23-43 Even in his final hours, Jesus offers salvation to a repentant soul promising him eternal peace and a place in paradise. Jesus promises salvation not only to a repentant sinner, but to all who turn to him, even in their final moments. His assurance of paradise is a reminder that our endurance in faith amidst persecution leads to eternal salvation. As Jesus assured the thief on the cross of his place in paradise, so too does he offer us unfailing hope amidst our trials. The third word, Jesus said, looking at Mary and John, Woman, here is your son, and then to John, here is your mother. John 19, 26-27 In his concern for the well-being of his mother after his death, Jesus entrusts her to the care of his beloved disciple, John. Jesus demonstrates his care for personal relationships, ensuring his mother is cared for, highlighting the importance of community and love, In entrusting Mary to Joan, Jesus underscores the importance of community and mutual care, especially in times of persecution. Let us forge strong bonds of fellowship, standing together in solidarity. For in unity, we find strength to face persecution, buoyed by the love and support of our spiritual family. The fourth word, Jesus said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27 46. In a moment of profound agony and feeling of abandonment, Jesus cries out a quotation from Psalm 22, expressing his deep spiritual suffering. Jesus experiences the depths of human despair, identifying with our sorrows and feelings of abandonment, yet still trusting in God. Even Jesus experienced moments of desolation. His candid expression of abandonment invites us to acknowledge our own feelings of isolation, yet also to trust in God's presence, even when it feels absent. When you feel most alone, remember Jesus on the cross. In your cries of forsakenness, let trust in God's plan anchor you, for he is with you always, especially in your darkest hours. The fifth word, Jesus said, I am thirsty. John 19.28 A simple, Human expression of physical suffering, Jesus is offered vinegar to drink on a sponge, fulfilling the scripture. 
Jesus' physical thirst symbolizes the deep longing of the human soul for spiritual sustenance and the fulfillment of Scripture through his suffering. It reminds us that God understands our human pains and struggles intimately. In acknowledging our own vulnerabilities and needs, we allow ourselves to fully experience God's comforting presence. Let Jesus' humanity inspire you to bear your sufferings with grace, knowing he walks with you. The sixth word, Jesus said, it is finished. John 19.30 With these words, Jesus declares the completion of his earthly mission, the fulfillment of prophecies, and the final victory over sin and death. In declaring it is finished, Jesus announces the completion of his sacrificial mission, offering hope and redemption to the world. Jesus' proclamation of completion is not only the end of his earthly suffering, but also the ultimate victory over sin and death, a victory shared with us. The seventh word. Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Luke 23, 46. With a final cry, Jesus breathes his last, surrendering his spirit into the hands of his Father, signifying his trust and obedience even unto death. Jesus' last words are a prayer of trust and reunion, a testament to his unwavering faith in God's plan for salvation. In his final moments, Jesus surrenders completely to the Father, demonstrating absolute trust in God's will, even in death. Darkness fall, and the earth shaked. Those present at Calvary were left to ponder the profound impact of Jesus' final words. Through his suffering and death, Jesus exemplified forgiveness, offered salvation, fulfilled prophecy, achieved victory, and trusted in God's will.